How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ken and today I want to quickly share with you guys how you can unlock all languages on the ZV E10, the A7 Mark IV and the ZV E1 by tweaking some settings in the system's firmware. All of these cameras have been tested and it is working as of July 2024. So to set the context, if you have a Sony ZV E10 camera from Japan or any other Sony cameras, you will realize that these cameras are actually region locked, where the language option is literally missing from the menu. However, you can tweak some settings in the camera's firmware, but disclaimers first, I am not particularly sure if this voids your warranty in any sense or form, so please do this at your own risk. With that out of the way, let's get started. So what you will need is your ZV E10 that is region locked, a Windows machine and a USB cable. First, there are three things that you need to download. First in which is Zedit, which is a Windows application that installs generic USB drivers to help you access USB devices. And in this case, the ZV E10. And be sure to download the release version 2.8 instead of 2.9, which is the latest version that is available as of July 2024, as this will be crucial to the unlocking process. Next, you would also need the Sony PMCARE, which is a tool that interfaces Sony digital cameras through USB that allows users to tweak some settings. Be sure to also install this particular version of the PMCA.exe file. Both of these links will be included in the description box down below. That being said, let's get started with the unlocking process. First, insert the USB cable into the ZV-E10, and in my case, I'm using a USB-C cable connecting the ZV-E10 to my Windows machine. As you establish a USB connection, the ZV-E10 will prompt the user to select the USB connection type. In our case, we are selecting mass storage. If this setting is grayed out on your ZV-E10, you need to go to the network tab and under smartphone connect, smartphone connections, set this to off. Now, go back to the USB connection tab and you should be able to select mass storage connection. Now, once this is done, you can set the ZVE10 aside, fire up zedic.exe on your Windows machine. First thing you want to do is go to the Options tab and list all devices. Next, change the output driver to libusb-windows32 version 1.2.7.3 like such. And from the drop-down menu, look for your ZVE10 and have that selected. Once you have confirmed these two settings, you can leave the rest as it is and hit Replace Driver. And you should get a warning prompt that reads, Warning system drivers, you are about to modify system drivers, are you sure you hit yes? And the upgrade should start rolling out. This process should take about 10 to 20 minutes and once done, you will get a pop-up menu that says the driver was installed successfully. Next, launch up Sony PMCA.exe which should bring up the open memories PMCA-GUI version 0.18-22-GA82F5BA. This version in particular. Head over to the Twix tab and this Start Tweaking Service Mode option should be available. Hit that and you will see some lock prints showing up at the bottom, like Switching Service Mode, Authenticating, and finally you will get this Twix menu setting. Take the Unlock All Languages option and also enable PAL slash NTSC selector and warning. Click Apply after that and check on the lock print once again. It should be showing done, indicating that the settings were applied successfully. And that's basically it. You can remove the USB cable, turn off and on the ZVE10 and you will have all languages menu available like mine. But this is because I have not completed the initial settings on the camera, so I will be greeted with a list of languages when I first turn on the ZVE10. If you have completed it, then you will need to search it out from the menu system directly. For the language settings, you can find it on the Setup 3 tab under Languages, and the NTSC slash PL selector is on the Setup 2 tab. And that is how you unlock all available languages on your CVE 10 as of 2024. Be sure to use the exact versions of the firmware that I've shown in this video for this to work. This method also works on the A7 Mark IV as well as the ZVE-1. In case if you are interested, you can check out those videos on how to do them in the description box down below. If you have any questions or if you need any help, let me know in the comments down below. I'll be sure to get back to you guys as soon as possible. As always, thank you all so much for tuning in. My name is Ken and I'll catch you all in the next video. Stay safe, peace out and bye-bye.